what's going on? Is metacosis perfect standards where medicine makes perfect sense? Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the conduction system of the heart, the SA node, the AV node, etc. Today, it's time to talk about the basics of the cardiac cycle, so let's get started. If my heart rate is 100 beats per minute, how many cardiac cycles do I have per minute? 100. Duh! This is my playlist, please watch these videos in order. The heart has four chambers, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle left ventricle aorta systemic circulation right ventricle pulmonary artery pulmonary circulation if the blood pressure here goes up it's called systemic hypertension if blood pressure here goes up it's called pulmonary hypertension in anatomy you have one heart but physiologically speaking if you really want to understand it imagine that you have two hearts you have a left heart and a right heart. Today's video is discussing the cardiac cycle. We'll focus more on the left heart because it matters more. Because here we're talking about the aorta. This is the big vessel that's gonna supply the heart and the brain. What else could you ask for? Left ventricle is way more important than the right ventricle. That's why. If patient A told the doctor that he has right bundle branch block and patient B told the doctor that he has left bundle branch block, of course, the doctor is gonna be more concerned about the left bundle branch block because we care more about the left ventricle. We talked about the adult circulation before. Left ventricle has oxygenated blood. It's gonna pump it to the aorta through the aortic valve. When the aortic valve is open, the mitral valve is closed. Oxygenated blood goes all over your body. Systemic circulation. Thank you. Each cell is going to take oxygen and nutrients and it's going to secrete carbon dioxide and waste. All of this will go to the veins, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. We end up here in the right side of the heart, right atrium first. Right atrium is going to give the deoxygenated blood to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. When the tricuspid valve is open, the pulmonic valve is closed. Next, right ventricle is going to pump the deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk, right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, to the right lung and to the left lung, respectively. The lung is going to take that carbon dioxide, breathe it out, and then breathe oxygen in. Oxygen is going to go to the pulmonary veins. These are veins, but they carry oxygenated blood. Similarly, pulmonary artery is an artery, but it carries deoxygenated blood. Anyways, we were here, pulmonary veins, oxygenated blood, back to the left atrium. Left atrium is gonna give the blood to the left ventricle. This is oxygenated through the mitral valve. When the mitral valve is open, the aortic valve is closed. Both atria contract at the same time. Both ventricles contract at the same time. But the atria and the ventricles do not contract together. We have to wait because of the AV nodal delay, if you remember. When the ventricles contract, mitral and tricuspid valves close to prevent the backflow from ventricles to atria. But when the ventricles relax, aortic and pulmonic valve close to prevent the backflow of the blood from the big arteries to the ventricles. The purpose of a valve is to allow fluid to move in one direction only and to prevent the backflow in the opposite direction. You know the valve on the tire of your car? It allows air to go in, not out. Normal heart sounds were discussed before. When you slam the doors shut, you hear a sound. When the valves close, you hear heart sounds. But when a valve opens, you will not hear anything. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Lub, dub. lub is S1, dub is S2. Between them is systole. Between S2 and the following S1 is diastole. Who causes S1 the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve? They close together and now the ventricle is gonna eject the blood. And then S2 is caused by the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves. Remember in the last video, who comes first? The electricity or the light? Well, electric current has to flow first and then the electrical filament is gonna convert electrical energy into light energy. Same thing happens in the heart. Electricity comes first. We're talking here about depolarization, followed by the contraction of muscles. 
electricity first, contraction later, atrial depolarization or activation first, followed by atrial muscle contraction. Moreover, ventricular electricity first, that's the depolarization or activation of the ventricle, followed by ventricular contraction. Electricity first, then you get light. Depolarization first, then you get muscle contraction. This is your ECG or EKG, electrocardiogram, P wave, Q wave, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. Why do we see P? This is atrial depolarization. What is the Q, R, S? Ventricular depolarization, which is activation. How about T? Ventricular repolarization. But hey, medicosis, where is atrial repolarization? It is masked under here because this is huge. It's masking the atrial repolarization underneath it. When I say that normal blood pressure is, for example, 120 over 80, please don't do this. Don't say, oh, 120 over 80. Just give me one second, medicosis. I'll cancel this with this. And then they are divisible by 4. 12 over 4 is 3. 8 by 4 is 2. The patient's blood pressure is 3 over 2. What the flip are you doing? This is not division. This is just signifying that systolic is before, diastolic is written after. Example, when we write without like this, does that mean W divided by out? Get your head out of your sphincter. This is not division. 120 over 80 means that the systolic blood pressure is 120. The diastolic is 80. What's the definition of systolic blood pressure? It is the blood pressure in big arteries during systole, which means during ventricular contraction. What is diastolic blood pressure? It's blood pressure in the big arteries when the ventricles are relaxing, diastole. If you remember your physics, pressure equals force over area. Same thing here, blood pressure equals the force that the blood exerts on the wall divided by the surface area of the wall of the vessel. So let's say that my blood volume increased. Oh, the force is gonna go up, therefore pressure is gonna go up, provided that the area did not change. Cool. Let's say I vasoconstricted the artery. Oh, constriction, the surface area is gonna decrease, blood pressure is gonna increase, provided that the force did not change. So if I want to increase my blood pressure, I either increase the blood volume or narrow the vessel lumen. Conversely, if I want to lower the blood pressure, I either decrease blood volume by giving a diuretic, for example, or I should dilate the artery by giving a vasodilator. Of course, it is way more complicated than this and it has calculus, but let's just keep it simple, stupid. Now, let's talk about the pressure not in the arteries, but in the heart chambers. So here is a very good way to remember the pressure in each chamber, okay? And we will use US currency or any currency for this matter. So here we have five cents and then I'll give you a nickel. Then I'll give you a quota. Then I'll give you one dollar. These are the pressures in the four chambers during their systole. So when the right atrium is contracting, it has five millimeters of mercury of pressure. When the left atrium is contracting, it, high, it has 10 millimeters of mercury. How about right ventricle? 25 millimeters of mercury during its contraction. How about this? The left ventricle is the dollar. What's the dollar? This is the 120 that we talked about. Okay, medicosis, you talked about the systolic. Can you tell me the diastolic? All of them are zeros. Really? Yes. Let me tell you something. You see that right atrium? The diastolic could be zero or even negative. Negative pressure? Why do I need negative pressure here? Because negative pressure sucks in. It pulls in the blood from the superior and inferior vena cava towards the right atrial chamber. So let's do the pressures in the four chambers again. In the right atrium, 5 over 0. Left atrium, 10 over 0. Right ventricle, 25 over 0. Left ventricle, 120 over 0. But hey, medicosis, I notice a difference. We said that the pressure in the big arteries is 120 during systole and 80 during diastole. But when it comes to the left ventricle, which is the source of the contraction, I have 120 during systole and 0 during diastole. What the what? Let me tell you why. First of all, let's explain the cause of this 120 because it's easy, whether we're talking about a ventricle or the aorta. Okay, the 120 is caused by the contraction 
of the muscles of the ventricle and the ejection of blood. This is huge. Pew! 120 millimeters of mercury. Awesome. Now let's talk about the diastole. When the ventricle finishes contractions, all of the blood is out, right? It's in the aorta now. Therefore, there is nothing in the ventricle and the blood pressure drops to zero. Okay, medicosis, now tell me about this 80. All right. When the ventricle is relaxing, which is diastole, what happens to the aortic valve? The aortic valve is gonna shut. Yeah, let's close it. Nice. Where is the blood going? The blood is gonna accumulate here. Some of it is pushed forward. Some is still here. Okay. The aorta is gonna clamp down and constrict on that blood, which raises the pressure from zero to 80. Oh, that's impressive. But why didn't the left ventricle clamp on the blood and raise the pressure because if it did the coronaries will not be able to fill because your coronary arteries fill during diastole that's why it did not rise if your ventricles clamps during diastole i'll have to use rene descartes philosophy and doubt your own existence how do you respond when someone says thank you well if you work at chick-fil-a you say my pleasure but if you work in the emergency room, you say, my pressure. Bang! I hate myself. Aorta, 120 over 80. So we decrease from 120 to 80 down here. But look at the left vent. 120 during systole, zero during diastole. That's how you represent it. What's the name of this lovely thing here? It's called a notch. Dicrotic notch. It's a notch with two crura. Here is a cross, here is a cross, dicrotic notch. What's the cause of this dicrotic notch? Aortic valve closes and the aorta is gonna clamp down on that blood, raising the pressure from zero to 80 or preventing the pressure from falling to zero. Instead, we will be at 80. Why is this important? Because your coronaries fill during diastole. So this has to have some pressure but the ventricle need not clamp, lest it should clamp on the coronary arteries and suffocate itself. Now, forget the pressure, let's talk about the volume. Okay, when the ventricle contracts, the volume of that blood leaves the ventricle and goes to the aorta. So if you look into the ventricle during systole, you'll see the blood leaving, therefore the volume decreasing. During diastole, the ventricle is relaxing and accepting blood, receiving blood from the left atrium. That's why the volume of blood in the left ventricle is going up during ventricular diastole. Let's put it all together. Let's talk about left ventricular pressure. Zero, and you go up to 120 during systole. During diastole, you drop down to zero. That's the left ventricular pressure. How about the aortic pressure? 120 during systole, and then you do not fall to 80 because of the clamping down. Closure of the aortic valve, clamping down, you get 80 instead of zero. Thank you. Volume of the left ventricle. During systole, you're losing blood to the aorta, so the volume decreases. During diastole, you are claiming your blood from the left atrium, so the volume increases. Before the ventricle contracts, we have to close the mitral valve, S1. During diastole, the ventricle relaxes. We want to prevent the backflow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle, so we have to close the aortic valve. S2. During S1, the mitral and the tricuspid close. During S2, the aortic and pulmonic close. Who happens first? Electricity or contraction? Electricity first, then the ventricle is gonna contract. QRS is ventricular depolarization. After this, you will contract the ventricle. Depolarization followed by contraction. How long does each cardiac cycle take? Well, if your heart rate is 60 beats per minute, this will take one second because we have 60 seconds in a minute. But if your heart rate is higher than 60, it will take less than a second, 0 0.8. If you want to calculate the heart rate here, easy. You have 60 seconds per minute divided by 0 0.8 seconds, you'll get 75 beats per minute. This is your heart rate. Ventricular systole is not just one phase, it has three subphases. So there is isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection, reduced ejection. The diastole also has many phases, but this is beyond the scope of this video. We were just scratching the surface. If you like this video, you will adore my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. You can download it today. It has 50 videos with cases, questions, etc.
I also have a kidney physiology course. And you can get a 30% discount towards any course on my website by using promo code PANCREAS. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.